Hello everyone, we reached video 20 in our R series. In this video, I will show you how to do principal component analysis in R in a very simple way. You can also find the documentation of this video on my R blog. I'll put the link in the description below, which also has the codes. So let's start. So principal component analysis is a technique that's used to reduce data dimension. It makes sense of big data. It gives an overall shape of data and identify which samples are similar and which are different. For example, if we have gene expression of 250 genes for 13 different cells. So we will have a table like this. It has 250 rows for the gene and 13 columns for the cells. So from that table, we can plot a very nice, simple PCA plot, which separates normal cell line from cancer cell line, according to their gene expression profile. So as an example, we will be using data from this paper. In this paper, they explain that pre elimination embryo at day three and four, they have only one type of cell. And starting from day five, these cells transform into three kinds of cells. So they did RNA sequencing for those cells. And what we will do is we will be using this table. So if you want to download that table, I will put the link of the paper in the description. You can download it from the supplementary table S2. So we will be using this table. So it has the cell at day three, day four, pre day five, and day five starting having three different kinds of cells, day six and day seven. So we will do two PCA plots. First one, it will be according to the cell type. And second one, it will be according to the gene expression. So let's go to our studio and see how we can do it. So first, let's read our table. And as we can see here, we have the cell type on the column and the gene on the row. So we need to download and load two packages. So I already installed it before so I'm just gonna load them now we will create the principal component table using the PCA function PCA function before creating the principal component table also standardize the data so if you don't want to standardize the data you can write it equal false you can see here I omitted the first column because it doesn't have any values and it will make problem for the PCA function so let's run this command now we will use the eigenvalue function to see if our uh, data were represented by our model. So if we run this command, we can see that the first two components, they represent more than 80% of the data, which is something very good. There is no one rule that you can rely on. So sometimes the first three components, if they represent more than 70%, is also acceptable. So now before we go to creating the PCA plot, we can create a correlation plot. This plot here gives us an idea about the correlation of the data. So, for example, here, these type of cells, the EPI, for example, they cluster close to each other, which means that they are really correlate with each other. But if here we don't have any negative correlation, but if there is any negative correlation, it will appear an arrow on this side. And also the length of the arrow is very important. If, if it's short, it means that it's not well represented by our model. If it's long like here, it's well represented. And whereas there is 90 degree between one variable and another, it means that there is no any correlation between them. So let's create PCA plot using the cell type. To do that, we need to flip first the table and put the cell on this side. That's why here inside the PCA function, we use the T function to flip the data. Again, we omit the first column because there is no values here. So let's run this command. Now we are using this function to create the PCA plot. And we use the cost to, to color the data. Cost 2, as you can see here, it shows how the variable is presented by the model. As I explained, the long is better, which is uh, purple, and the short, which is the yellow here, is not well represented. So let's run this command. Now we will use this package to add labels to the plot. So I already run it, so I won't run it here. I will just load it. 
and in this inside the function you can write your title and you can write the x for example is pc1 and the y is pc2 and the legend here is cost 2 so let's run this command and as we can see here these type of cell they cluster next to each other which means that they have the same gene expression profile so this is one type of cell the second type of cell and this third type of cell is a little bit away from each other but still it's close to each other another pca we can do is we can do according to the gene expression profile so we can run this command again similar to previously here we won't flip the table and here we need to because we want to color the gene according to lineage so here we are choosing that first column we will color according to the first column so we will convert it to factor first and here I created a color palette so to color the genes I will run this command in our column we have only three types, so we have only three factors so if you have more than three types four five six you just change this number here and command will run normal so again we will use this function to create the PCA plot and lastly we will add the labels and you can see here the PCA plot one thing to note that here there is specific gene they are associated uh, with the specific type of cells so they have they are highly expressed compared to the other genes so this gene could be a marker for this type of cells so that's it for this video next video will be our last video in data visualization and will be about circular plots thank you for watching